Hey there, Royals. I'm Mari, the executive producer of Royals Week in Review. And today we have Dr. Watts here, who is the superintendent of our school district. And what we're going to be asking him today are a few questions that Royals Week in Review has for him and a few questions that a few of our students here at Kent Meridian have submitted. So can you please share like a bit of your background with us, Dr. Watts? I certainly will. Uh, again, my name is Calvin Watts. I was born in the Pacific Northwest, born in Seattle, raised in, in Bellevue, and spent a great deal of my uh, waking hours in the south and central Seattle area. I graduated from high school uh, in uh, 1986 and then decided that Seattle area was a great place for me to grow up and perhaps, as I said, a great place for me to grow older, and I decided to uh, relocate to Georgia. I spent 21 years there, I met my wife and we have one son, and we now have the great opportunity to return back to my home, Pacific Northwest, and be a part of this amazing Kent, Kent community. All right, well, we're glad to have you back up here. Um, the next question is, what made you want to come here to the Kent School District? That's a, an excellent question, and I will say it is uh, a script that was written, and I'm just following it. That's really how I feel. When I, uh, and I've had the opportunity to serve in many different roles and responsibilities in public education, I will always consider myself a teacher. In fact, I began my teaching career nine miles north of, uh, of the Kent School District in a school called South Shore Middle School. And I taught sixth grade students, and it was the, the best job I ever had. And I will say that every job and role in which I've served in public education has been just as rewarding. Now that I have the opportunity to not only teach uh, and develop, and also set the conditions so that all students can be successful as well as the adults who serve them. Uh, I have found a, a perfect match and I believe I'm, I'm wired for this work. And the Kent School District uh, was certainly seeking a superintendent and it just so happened to be right in line with my uh, short-term, mid-range, long-term goals professionally. And I applied and I'm very pleased that our school board selected me uh, and I'm humbled and honored to serve and plan to earn my stripes every day. And again, I plan to be here for a very, very very, very long time. So could you tell us a few of your responsibilities as our superintendent? Yes. So my job is simple. It's just not easy. So what I mean by simple is there are a few steps that, that can really help me be successful. First of all, I need to be uh, able to communicate uh, effectively with all members of our community. That includes our teachers, our school leaders, our students, as well as our community members, faith-based, business, civic organizations. And I also need to make sure that the resources that, that we have, uh, that includes financial resources, human resources, as well as time, are all used effectively so that you as a student, as a junior here at KM, and the rest of uh, our 27,000 students can be successful. That's, that's a, a big part of my job. Could you tell us what you think is the best thing about Kent School District and where is a place that we can improve? Well, I believe the best thing always, the best thing about uh, the Kent School District is our people. We have amazingly talented, passionate, skilled uh, adults who are here to provide service and support to our students. And obviously our students are tremendously talented as well. I think that any organization that cares about uh, moving from good to great uh, is an organization that seeks to continuously improve. So where can we improve? I believe the one, one place where we can improve the most is ensuring that we have uh, systems and structures and processes that are, that are being utilized in a very highly reliable way. Uh, that would include you know, from, from our, our schedules that we, we keep at our schools to our human resources practices at the district office to our budgeting procedures uh, at the district office. All of those systems help you and me do our jobs uh, very well every day. As you can tell, the Kent School District is incredibly diverse, yes. but students of color statistically are behind in grades, test scores, graduation rates, and other success indicators. So what are we doing at the Kent School District to make sure that all students are learning at their highest potential? That's an a excellent question. In fact, every question you've asked is excellent. That one in particular, because that is why we exist. Uh, our mission in the Kent School District, as you know, is to successfully prepare all students for their futures. And what I want for the Kent School District to truly understand is that we need to have a shared understanding of what success means, what all means, and what futures means. Because, quite frankly, our futures are, are 
being written as we speak. There are jobs that are available. There are college experiences, two-year, four-year apprenticeship experiences that are available for all students. However, as you've just pointed out, uh, there are predictors for some students to be more successful or less successful. And unfortunately, those predictors have a great deal to do with sometimes uh, with race, ethnicity, uh, and sometimes language uh, ability. That being said, our goal is equity and excellence. And what I mean by that is equity is not the same thing as equality. Equality and fairness means that, that we have a standard of performance for all of our, our students. We expect all of our students to be not just prepared, uh, most importantly, be, to be ready once they walk across the stage to enter any post-secondary experience so that it can be successful. Uh, what we're doing to make sure that that takes place is that we're identifying those students who are being less successful, who are being underserved, and providing uh, programs, initiatives, and ultimately making sure that we have a curriculum that's aligned with our assessments, that's also aligned with our instruction, and so that you, every day, have, have all that you need to learn and achieve at increasingly higher levels. And that's a, that's a tough job, and as you mentioned, uh, I need your help as well as the adults in the school district to make that, that happen every day for every student. Okay, so now we're going to move over to a few questions that the um, students here submitted. Okay. So one student asked, what do you think are the necessary skill sets to find success? The necessary skill sets to find success. Well, what I've learned is that 75% uh, of being successful comes in this one simple act, and that is showing up. So in order to be successful, you first have to be present. That, that means be present physically and also be present mentally, emotionally, in the moment, just as we're having this conversation. Uh, the other 25% is the most difficult part. That's the choices that we make every day. So to be successful in this environment, this knowledge economy and industry, you need to know content. You need to know the information in order for uh, you to be successful in whatever role in which you're serving. Does not mean you need to know everything. When you don't know everything, you also need to know how to ask the right questions. And so uh, I would add to that, that interpersonal skills, being able to relate, to listen, to communicate effectively with all members of our community and as richly diverse as our community is, that is incredibly important because the world is in Kent and we need to be able to communicate on a world stage. So another student asked, have you had any mentors that have made an impact in your life? Yes. Uh, when I think about mentors, I think about coaches, I think about individuals who have stepped in uh, the path that, that I'm, I'm choosing. The greatest mentors and leadership uh, uh, exemplars that I've had are my parents. I would say that, that first and foremost. I've had mentors along the way in my role as a teacher, as a principal, as a district level leader, and certainly as a superintendent. I've learned, uh, most importantly, I've learned from the successes and significant accomplishments that others have had who've, who I've paid attention to. I think I've also learned from the failures. In other words, when someone uh, did not reach a goal that they set, I learned how to respond because that's part of life. We're not always going to be successful in terms of reaching our goal the first or the second time. Uh, so I've had many mentors and I, I consider that uh, a very valuable tool uh, that I've learned from every day. Was, what is the best thing about being superintendent? Well, the best thing about being superintendent, I would give a perfect example, is, is what I'm doing today. Uh, there are 27,000 reasons why uh, I wake up thinking about the same thing that I, I went to sleep the night before, and I take a series of naps. So I don't uh, really sleep much because I'm always thinking about what we need to do in order to be a, a better organization. The best thing about, about being superintendent is, quite frankly, being able to interact with all of our uh, community stakeholders. That includes our teachers, our staff, our students, those who live in the community. And it is, uh, every day is a wonderful opportunity for us to get better and for certainly for me to engage uh, with our community. That's the best part of my job. That's right. So, so could you tell us what is your favorite joke? My favorite joke. So knock, knock. Who's there? Nobody. Nobody's home. That's that's got to be my favorite joke. That's got to be my. See, it made you laugh, and that's what a joke is supposed to do, right? Yeah. There you go. 
Thank you very much for coming down to our studio today, Dr. Watts, and we really did enjoy having you here. Well, thank you. It was, it was a distinct pleasure, and I look forward to uh, supporting you in any way possible. Thank you for having me.